Hello YouTube, Sandra here. Now to all those who are wondering when the next IQ video is going to be up, because, well, all my IQ videos are very popular, uh, the next one should be up on Sunday. I might have it up sooner, but I should be able to put it up on Sunday. Now, why it's been delayed for a while now is because, well, I have an exam coming up in less than two weeks. On top of this, I have a couple of days of working as a substitute teacher. So yeah, it's a little bit more hectic than I thought it would be, but hey, that's the academic life for you. But like I said, I'm working on it. Anyway, the video I'm responding to claims that hydrogen peroxide, of all things, can cure cancer. You know, that, that thing that your body desperately tries to get rid of in your cells because it's highly toxic? The thing that people with Down syndrome, for instance, produce too much of and have to get rid of desperately, which is why they have a special diet, just so they can get rid of hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, 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 that, that, that chemical, indeed, indeed. Let, let's begin. Hydrogen peroxide and cancer, this is what you must know. Beat cancer with 35% hydrogen peroxide. Cancer is dangerous. Don't flirt with disaster. Don't eat it and don't go near it. Don't drink it. Don't put it on your skin. Yes, this is a warning not to put cancer on or inside your body. Are you kidding me? No. Cancer is not something contagious. I mean, what the hell? Do, do you know anything about cancer? Cancer is when your own cells go rogue. Okay? Your own cells. You cannot catch cancer from someone because cancer originates from your cells not following its usual cellular cycle and dying as it should, but instead goes on living and dividing. Now, it is true that some viruses, for instance, which are contagious, can in the long run cause cancer, like the HPV virus, which is why a vaccine is given to at least girls. Although you may wonder why boys don't get the vaccine always as well, because, well, fuck the boys, I guess. They, their lives don't matter. Let's only care about the girls' cancer, I guess. But anyway, moving on. No, you, you can't fucking catch cancer from someone. What the fuck? Cancer is in GMO pesticide DNA seed designs and the treatments used on vegetables and fruit. Uh... What? What the fuck did you just say? What? No, it's, what? What the fuck? No. Cancer is not in the food you eat, okay? Now, some foods that you eat have a more prevalency of causing mutations in the long run that can give rise to cancer in your body, yes. But it's not like cancer is like something fucking physical that's in your fucking food. What the fuck? Cancer is in sunblock lotions full of toxins that hold in your sweat and block out the vitamin D you would normally get from the sun. Now, it is true that people, generally speaking, in the northern and very southern latitudes of the world uh, are more indoors these days than they used to be, and as such, it is likely that they may develop some slight vitamin D deficiency. This is especially common with immigrant groups from further south or north, depending on which hemisphere we're talking about, where they tend to develop, you know, more darker skin. However, if you have a fair complexion, you should wear sunscreen during the summer because you are outdoors more than. If you develop vitamin D deficiency, well, you simply stay out in the sun a bit longer with the sunscreen on, just to prevent getting sunburned. I'm gonna explain why you should never get sunburned shortly. Or, if you have a more severe deficiency, a doctor will simply prescribe you pills with vitamin D in them. Now, why you should still wear sunscreen, even though you have a vitamin D deficiency, if you have a fair skin complexion, is because, well, whenever you get sunburned, you actually damage your skin cells. Now, if you burn yourself a few times, it's not really that bad. It's probably not gonna increase your chances of developing skin cancer later on, but if you start burning your skin too often because you've been sloppy with putting on the sunblocker, then this will, whenever you are sunburned, lead to a prevalency of cancer later on. Cancer is in cosmetics, makeup, soaps, toothpaste and shampoos. Cancer may be lurking in your refrigerator, your pantry and in your medicine cabinet. 
uh, why do I get the feeling that this is sounding more and more like a 1950s anti-commie propaganda film? In recognizing cancer, physical appearance counts for nothing. If he openly declares himself to be a cancer, we take his word for it. If a person consistently reads and advocates the views expressed in a cancer publication, he may be a cancer. If a person supports organizations which reflect cancer teachings or organizations labeled cancer by the Department of Justice, she may be a cancer. If a person defends the activities of cancer nations while consistently attacking the domestic and foreign policy of the United States, she may be a cancer. In all seriousness, though, what the fuck is wrong with you? I, I, I mean, I mean seriously, what what the fuck is wrong with you? What 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 is this? But it has an arch enemy. Cancer has a rival that destroys it like an M60 leveling a field of enemy soldiers. It's called hydrogen peroxide, and the lame stream. Mainstream media will tell you how dangerous it is at 35%, but they won't tell you that you can drip a couple drops in a glass of water each day and end cancer. Yes, it's true. Uh, no shit hydrogen peroxide is uh, lethal to cancer cells because it's lethal to all cells. There's a reason why when your body naturally produces it, it wants to get rid of it in a most efficient manner as possible. Like I mentioned before, some people such as people with Down syndrome, have a problem with hydrogen peroxide more easily building up in their cells compared to other people who have a normal set of chromosomes. In these people, they even require a special kind of diet just to make sure that they don't form too much hydrogen peroxide. This diet is very rich in antioxidants. Even if you don't have Down syndrome naturally, just eating more antioxidants in general is a very good idea. Now, hydrogen peroxide is actually used by your own cells to fight invading cells such as bacteria. But that being said, hydrogen peroxide is very toxic and too much of it in any concentration in your body can be lethal. Cancer thrives in an acid-heavy system where the blood and the organs are flooded with processed salt, sugar, animal fat and artificial food. Now, it is true that the near environment around cancer cells tend to have a pH that's very low. In other words, the environment around the tumor cells, when you have cancer, tend to be quite sour, acidic. But this has nothing to do with tumor cells supposedly growing better in an acidic environment. It's actually a direct consequence of the metabolism of the cancer cells. So yes, this is one of those cases where people who don't know enough about cancer and how it works Take a look at the environment of the area around the cancer cell and deduces that, oh, this must be the kind of environment that the cancer cell thrives in. Cancer can indeed grow in an acidic environment, but that's not because it's its first preference by any means. It's just a direct consequence of its metabolism. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking done. All right, that, that, that's, that's the video, folks. Just, I, I hope you're satisfied. Fucking hell.